Good morning. Welcome to Atonement Lutheran Church on this very cold morning. So I say thank you for those here in the sanctuary. Thank you for coming and braving this cold. I say thank you, God, for cars and pickups starting this morning so that we are able to come and worship together. And thank you for those that are joining online, wherever you are, please stay warm and stay safe. Please notice the announcements in the bulletin. I have one correction. Um, our youth event down in Gackle this afternoon is postponed. It's called Fun in the Sun, and with the um, cold temperatures and scheduling for the youth, we are post um, that I receive word that that is being postponed um, till a later date. So um, the youth will be aware of that as I talk to them. And today we are celebrating the baptism of our Lord Sunday, the first Sunday after Epiphany, the beginning of the new year, we remember Jesus' baptism, and we remember our baptism and the promises that God makes through the waters of baptism to us each and every day. So we celebrate that we are children of God. And we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we celebrate that when we pass through the waters and the rivers and the fire and the troubles of life, that God is with us always. So as we begin today, we're going to have a um, temple talk. Um, Lyle, if you're able to come forward. And um, thank, you for, thank you for the temple talk on our capital campaign. Good morning. Um, it's been a while since I've been up front here asking for money. <laughs> so that's usually never a good thing. Um, first of all, I would like to thank all those that have continued to support Atonement over the past years and for those who are currently taking over that role. Um, we've seen lots of changes over the last few years and one of those is how we reach people. Um, with the start of the pandemic, we added a camera so that we could add our presence um, without a lot of interaction by, by individuals. Um, thank you to Steve that, of all the work that he's done the past years. Um, it, it is a, a fact that how people view church is changing. So what we would like to do is to add more video features to our current online presence. Um, we will be asking for around $8,000, of which we've already have $1,000 already pledged. Um, we'll be adding a second camera that'll have the capability to zoom and move to different presets within the sanctuary. Um, the, fund, the funds will be used for that camera, the installation, the switching equipment, um, so that it can be easily um, controlled without a lot of interaction by individuals, um, just so that we can improve the, the quality of our services that we put up online. So with that, as I said, we're raising a goal of about $8,000 we have about a thousand already pledged. We're not going to pull the trigger on this until we have the funds in hand. Um, so we will be over the next couple months looking for donations for that. Thank you. Thank you, Lyle. And um, yeah, if anyone is curious what um, what our camera looks like. You can go on to Facebook Live or on to YouTube and, and, um, <clears throat> and see. And so thank you for that. Let us please stand as today, like I said, we give thanks for the gift of baptism. I'm going to have Arliss pour water into the bowl as we begin our service today in prayer. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the, wa the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. We were joined to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. 
let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give thanks to you, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the water. By your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river Jordan your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim each of us as sons and daughters, making us heirs of God's promise and servants of all. We praise you, God, for the gift of water that sustains all life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your Holy Spirit. Renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you, Lord, be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And let us sing our gathering hymn, We Are Baptized in Christ Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's word. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 43, starting with the first verse. Near the end of Israel's exile in Babylon, God promises to bring the people home. They need no longer be afraid, because the one who formed, created, and called them by name now redeems them from all their enemies. God declares them precious and honored, and God loves them. 
But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I have formed and made. We will read response. Psalm 29, ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writh and the strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. O oh Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O oh Lord, blessings of peace. The second reading is from Acts chapter eight, starting with the 14th verse. Peter and John are sent to support the new Christians in Samaria, a group that was recently baptized after hearing the good news of Christ through the preaching of Philip. Here the Samaritans received the gift of the Holy Spirit and the laying on of hands. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Please stand for our gospel acclamation. We say together, Alleluia. A voice from heaven said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Alleluia. Our gospel today is from the gospel of St. Luke, the third chapter. The reading opens with questions about the identity of the Messiah. John the Baptist insists that he is not the Messiah, but instead John points ahead to the one who is coming. And whether the voice of God was heard by all or only by Jesus, God settles the matter, saying, Jesus is my beloved son. Jesus is God's beloved son. I begin on verse 15. As the people were filled with expectations and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is coming, excuse me, but, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. 
he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Are you, are you longing to hear God's voice? What would it be like to hear God call you by name? Mardina, Ella, Lyle, Sandy. God calls each and every one of us by name. And in the waters of baptism is when we were first called by our first and our middle name. Today's lessons have a thread of God's voice woven through the scriptures of the Old Testament, of Isaiah, Psalm 29, and our gospel today. God's voice. What does God's voice sound like to you? Think of a time when you heard God's voice. The psalmist tells us, Listen and praise God. Ascribe to the Lord. Praise God. When we listen, God's voice moves over the waters. The voice of the Lord moves over the mighty waters. Think of the sound of the crashing waves. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor, the psalmist says. The voice of the Lord is also powerful in the destruction that it can break the cedars and shake the wilderness. It can be like lightning flashes and thunder booms. We all know that water, water can be calm. Water is refreshing and invigorating and soothing. But water is powerful can be ominous and destructive. You all know one of my favorite places is Lake Superior. And as I was isolated um, with COVID the last um, few weeks, I found a, I was just in a room by myself and found a, with no TV, and found a site on on the internet where it showed um, you could take a virtual vacation to Lake Superior. So I thought, well, I'm going to go do that. And it was beautiful to see the pictures of the beauty of the power of Lake Superior and how some pictures, the waters were calm and serene. And you could hear just the waves just lapping across the rocks. And I just sat back and remembered and could just feel and and see. And then there were pictures last week. There was a terrible storm and Lake Superior can change in an instant and the power and the waves of these 15 and 20 foot waves crashing against these stones were just unbelievable and it made me think of the power of the water the power of God's voice but in all of the things in our life whether our life is calm or whether it feels like those waves are crashing against those rocks. God is with us, and the psalmist ends, O Lord, give strength to your people. Give your people, give your people, give to each of us the blessings of peace. And we listen to the voice of the Lord from Isaiah, one of my favorite verses. But thus says the Lord, God is speaking. The Lord who formed us and who created us 
says to each one of us, do not be afraid. Do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. These are beautiful words that the Lord said through the prophet Isaiah to the people who had been in exile. But I believe those, pe- those words are for you and I each and every day. These beautiful words of love and assurance. God says, you are mine. God says, you are precious in my sight. God says, I love you no matter what. In the devotional, Christ in Our Home, and if you don't have the new one for January, February, March, please pick one up at the back of the church. There's a devotional actually for tomorrow on this verse that was just beautiful, written by Pastor Kari, an associate pastor from Alexandria, Minnesota. And she titles her devotional, You Are Mine. Do not fear, I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, and you are mine. And she writes, any number of things can threaten our sense of worth and help us and leave us feeling unmoored. I had to look up that word. I didn't know what that meant. Leaving us feeling confused or insecure. Job loss, a scary diagnosis, infertility, miscarriage, depression, a loved one's death are some of the things that she lists. What are some things that are happening in your life that can leave you feeling out of sorts or confused or insecure? I can relate. It's been a hard couple weeks for myself, my father's death, my husband recovering from surgery, and then when I saw those two lines on a home COVID test, I'm like, okay, Lord, what next? So she writes, amid situations like this, we might feel as though we are passing through tumultuous waters or burning flames, like the images in our reading. Have you ever felt like that? I know I have. And she writes, what strikes me about these verses is that God doesn't say if you pass through the waters or walk through fire, but God says when, and that struck me. When, when we pass through the waters or when we walk through fire, God is honest about what happens in our life. Honest that we experience deep struggles. Honest that sometimes families cannot catch a break. Sometimes you may feel or I may feel like, Lord, enough is enough. Sometimes we feel like those waters are just lapping up against our chin. It feels like it's hard to keep our head above water. That's when God's word assures us that no matter what we're going through, God is with us and God cares for us and God will see us through because of God's love for us. So she writes, when we feel vulnerable or shaken or when the path before us seems filled with difficulty and struggle, We can depend on God to sustain us. And we can trust in those words. Do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. Hear God's voice. Do not fear. I am with you. Those are words of comfort, like a warm blanket beautiful words. I pray those words can give you comfort in those times of your life that just are overwhelming. And sometimes in our busy world, it's hard to hear God's voice. Amidst the busyness and everyday life, God calls us to be still and to listen. Listen. Amidst the struggles, amidst the weariness, God says, I am here. Our last reading from the Gospel of Luke, we hear the voice of God as we begin 
this new year and we are remembering the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our new year begins in beginnings and identities, begins in baptism. And people are asking in our text today, who is this John the Baptist? Is he the Messiah? Is he the promised one? But John says, nope, nope, I am not the Messiah. John's job is always to point, to point to the one that is greater than him, to point to Jesus, the Messiah. John says, there is one coming that's greater than I. I'm not worthy to untie his sandal. I'm not worthy. I baptize with water, John says, but Jesus, the one coming, is going to baptize with fire, cleansing, forgiveness, and the Holy Spirit. And so just imagine this scene. And Pastor Paul Ullman, wonderful, gifted pastor and artist, um, we have his paintings that we've been using for bullet um, illustrations, and we've watched him in Advent, and, and coming up in Lent, we'll be using him again as, as he draws the word and makes the word come alive. And I believe sometimes looking at a picture can open our mind in ways that open God's word in ways that we never imagine. So as you look at this painting of the baptism of Jesus, what do you see? What stands out for you? This picture is full of many, many images. But what's the first thing that pops, pops out to you? And each one of us are going to see something different. You may see Jesus in the middle with the little dove over his head. You may see the large dove in the corner, the rainbow, Jesus on the cross, the empty tomb, the hand held out, my God is holding me. You may see this large flower in the foreground or just the ripples of the water. But as we picture this scene, you can see in the, in the background, you can see lots of people. There are many people baptized that day by John. We don't know how many. And Luke doesn't give us a lot of details about his baptism. You can picture all these people in line, and Jesus was one in line to be baptized. But there are three things that Luke says that happened. Jesus was baptized. Jesus prayed. The heavens opened. The Holy Spirit, in the form of a dove, descended on Jesus. And a voice from heaven, God said, You are my son. Jesus, this is my son, the beloved. I love him so much. And with you, I am well pleased. Now, Jesus hadn't even begun his ministry. God hadn't even begun all the miracles and all the actions that will unfold as Jesus' ministry unfolds in the next couple years. What do you see as you see, as you look in that painting? What brings you comfort? We listen. We listen to those words that Jesus said. This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Those are the words that Jesus heard after his baptism, and I believe we need to listen to those words. God gave God gave the identity of who Jesus was. This is my son. And I believe God gives us that identity too in our baptism. Who are we? We are beloved children of God. We are loved, loved, loved deeply by God. Not by what we do, not by our, our job or our calling or our income or anything. We are loved solely on who we are. 
God's beloved child. And in those waters of baptism, God calls us by name. And we were baptized in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit and three splashes of water over our forehead. We might have been young or we might have been old when we were baptized. It doesn't matter. It is God's actions. And so listen to You are my beloved. You are a child of God. And on those days when it feels like the waters of our life are getting very choppy or the waves are crashing, crashing in our lives, threatening to overtake us, know without a doubt that God says, I will be with you. The waters will not overtake you. And as Martin Luther would say, stories had it that in the Wittenberg Castle, when Martin Luther was writing and translating the Bible into the German language so all could hear it, it is said that he would, you could hear him shout out when he would be overwhelmed or frustrated with the stresses of life or, or with his sins. He would shout out, I am baptized. And so I challenge you, when life feels stressful, when those waters are overwhelming, make the sign of the cross on your forehead, shout out, or say in your heart, I am baptized. God is with me. So, as I conclude, I invite you to take your finger and make the sign of the cross on your forehead as we remember God's actions and we remember God's promises. And remember the words that were said at our baptism and say your first and your middle name, Linda Jane, child of God. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. You are marked with the cross of Christ forever and ever. Each one of us are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Jesus forever and ever. And God says, I will be with you. Do not be afraid. You are mine. Amen. 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 Let us sing together that song, our baptismal song, Baptized in Water.
we stand as together we confess our faith, the faith in which we were baptized, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated as we pray. As I say, God of grace, he, we respond together, hear our prayer. Let us pray. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon all of us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for all churches, to pray for the whole world and all that God has made. Lord, hear our prayers as we cry out to you in silence. By the Holy Spirit, you gather your church and you send it out in mission to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Inspire each one of us, inspire your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service. That people, that each of us may know that we are precious in God's sight and that we are loved no matter what. God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord God, you reveal your love and power through water and the Holy Spirit. Guard the rivers and seas, all the bodies of water from destruction and pollution. Secure access to clean water for all and protect the land from drought and flood. God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord God, establish among nations the blessings of peace. Raise up leaders who will protect vulnerable people in their care. Strengthen advocates for the sake of mercy and justice. And today we say a special prayer as it is the National Law Enforcement Day. And we give thanks for our law enforcement here in Jamestown and Stutzman County and all of the surrounding areas. Protect these men and women as they are protecting and keeping us safe. God of all grace, hear our prayer. You protect us through the fires and the troubled waters of our lives. Assure us that we will not be cut off from you by illness or despair, by anxiety or pain, confusion or weakness. Grant comfort and healing to all in need. We lift up our prayers of healing for Corey and Carol, Gary, Marvin, June, and Gerald and all else that we name in our heart. We thank you, Lord, for the healing that you have done and the healing that is yet to come. God of grace, hear our prayers. We are joined in baptism to Christ and to one another. Be with those who are preparing for baptism. Help us to live out our baptismal promises. Help us to be faithful in fellowship and worship evangelism, service, and seeking justice. God of all grace, hear our prayer. Lord God, you have created each of your saints by your glory. We give thanks for those that you have called by name into your eternal embrace. Comfort families in their grief and release us from, your, from our fears. Grant us peace. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith, trusting, trusting in God's promises, trusting that God is with us no matter what. 
We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join together and pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I hold up our offering plate, and I say thank you for the generosity that your gifts, your gifts given to atonement for our mission that God has for us. Thank you for your gifts given to our mission of the quarter for JRMC Hospice, a wonderful ministry for those families in end of life. Thank you, Lord, for Lyle's temple talk. And Lord, we lift up this, this capital campaign to help bring the word of God out to those who are unable to be here. So Lord, use our offerings to your mission. Lord, help us be your hands and your feet to all that we meet. Accept these offerings, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so there are offering containers at the back of the church. There are many ways to give um, online. Um, if you have any questions, you can certainly call our office, and, and especially those online, and we can share with you how to share in our mission here at Atonement. So we close our service together as we, I ask you to stand for our blessing. God, who leads you and leads each one of us in pathways of righteousness, God, who rejoices over you, and God, who calls you by name and loves you, may God bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. 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 Let us sing together our closing hymn, The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve. Go in Jesus' name. Go with Christ out into a weary world and share the good news. Thanks be to God. I want to invite everyone to come to our fellowship hall for coffee and, um, and fellowship. And we are in need of 
um, people to volunteer to serve our fellowship time and the sign up sheet is back on the window. So thank you for coming. Please stay safe, stay warm on this cold day. God bless you. God loves you and God is with you. Thanks for coming. Oh.